Okay, so let's understand a new concept called as call routing in GSM. This is the second topic. Okay, so now call routing it means how exactly a call is generated and how it receives to the receiver. So I had uh, drawn a flow diagram here, not a flow diagram, but just an explanation on this. So you are having a call and uh, your voice is nothing but the analog signal in the form of speech. Okay, then it goes to the source coding, then channel coding, interleaving, burst formatting, ciphering, modulation techniques. Then it goes to the channel and this is a receiver part and this speech and this, this speech is for sender and this speech is for receiver. Okay, so you are co communicating in that way. Now let's understand each and every aspect here. So first understand source coding and digitization. So source coding is nothing but a kind of a digital. You are converting your analog signal into a digital signal. And how exactly it can be done? You see, you are calling in 8 kilohertz frequency. Your user speech is digitized at 8 kilohertz. Okay. And then it's sampled using RPE LPC, that is regular pulse excited linear long term predictor loop. You know, it converts your analog to digital. So 8 kilohertz, it converted into 13 bit linear PCM value, that is pulse code modulation value. Okay. With the help of modulation technique. Then these 13 bit is going to be converted into 160 samples using encoder. And then this encoder, okay, this 160 samples, it is again compressed into 260 bit GSM frame with the help of some compression technique. And when it does, then this 260 bit frame, you know, it converted into something called as 160, uh, 1625 bytes. So one second speech, it is going to be compressed in one, 1625 bytes. So you understand that means uh, if we if we say 160, 1625 bytes, then I, if I convert into bits, then it is going to be 13 kbps. So your voice, one second voice is on the range of 13 kbps. Okay. So one second speech is for the 13 kbps. It is resulted into. Now, next is after the source coding, we have something called as channel coding. The second part is the channel coding. Now channel coding is specifically used for error detection and error correction. Here in this case it is not error detection, error correction but you know channel coding is specifically meant for error detection and error correction. So in GSM the gross, the total bitrate, gross bitrate is, is we call it as 22.8 kbps. Okay, this is 22.8 kbps, which is in if we if we convert into by, bits per second, then it is 22,800 bits per second. For if I if I want to make it at make it for 20 microsecond, this is for one second. Okay, if I want to make it for 20 microsecond, then it is nothing but 456 bits. You can easily convert it, right? One second is equals to 20, 22,800 BPS. Then uh, what is 20 microsecond? Then it is going to be 456 micro, uh, 456 bits. So that means your 456 bits here in this case, it is again, you know, divided into divided into eight 57 bit block. You understand? So eight 57 bit blocks so you can see here 57 cross 8 is nothing but 456 bits itself so 456 bit is divided into 57 bit block cross 8 so it gives you 456 bits now these 57 bit block you know it goes to the further level in the chain so we are we are in this position here source coding okay and then we go to the channel coding now in the channel coding we we have 57 bit block okay then it goes to the interleaving now understand this interleaving what do you mean by interleaving now interleaving i'll, I'll give you an explanation those 57 bit block comes in the interleaving now interleaving is specifically meant for you know error detection and error correction keep that in mind we have two types of errors we have single bit error and we have multiple burst errors you understand single bit error it means uh, 101 uh, this is the sender side if receiver side is something like this then you can see there is a mismatch and there is a mismatch and then there is a mismatch so there is single bit error uh, it's it's actually a multiple burst error let me I'm so sorry for this let me just change some of the okay so zero and then one so here you see there is one single bit error so this is known as single bit error okay it is easy to find but now what about if we have something like this uh, 0, 0, and 1. So here you can see 
that there is an error, then there is an error, and then there is an error. Now, if you know if the error is very 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 side to each other see this is a sh short example but uh, in in general in practical there is a long term of frames and long terms of bits so this is ongoing okay ongoing so if we have these kind of errors this is e this is not easy to find these are burst errors okay it is burst error and it is really very very hard to find it out and single bit error is easy to find so what exactly this interleaving does is it it finds it converts your burst error into the single bit error okay and this way you can easily find your error and easily correct that error so it converts your burst error into the single bit error and how exactly it does see here i will give you an explanation on that uh, so let me just first remove this okay so if let's say I have a block, let me have a block here. So I'll write a matrix here, one, two, three, and four. And then it is it is a block of 16 bytes, I think. 16 bits. Let me down one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, and 16. So these are this is a matrix and this is a sender side. Okay, so sender is sending 1 to 16 bits to the receiver side. So if you see the graph here, if, if you see the graph here, so this is 0, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on. Okay. This is a trans, tra, uh, I mean, sender side. This is the transmitter antennas graph. Now, let's assume that there is an error in this complete block. This is a burst error, right? So, this is an error. This is complete error here. So, you can easily find that 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah. So, transmitter is having an error here in the oscilloscope. You can find that 5, 6, 7, 8. This complete, uh, this complete uh, frame is having a burst error. Okay, this is the normal case. In the same side, you know, uh, this has been transmitted to the receiver side. The receiver will get this graph and he will understand that, yeah, 5, 6, 7, 8 is an error. But he can, he will not easily resolve it because, you know, this is an example of 1 to 16. But let's say I have 1000 bits, then it is not very easy because, you know, sometimes the burst is going to be here. Sometimes the burst is going to be going to be moving ahead or maybe it is, it is far behind. Like you cannot easily detect where exactly this burst error is. Where, where exactly this burst error is okay this is not easy way so with the help of interleaving how this interleaving you know uh, resolve this problem is it converts or it it transpose this matrix in this form so it is going to be 1 5 9 13 this is a transfer transposition okay so then 2 6 10 and 14 then 3 7 11 15 and 4 8 12 and 16 okay and the error now is let's say this is an interleaving this is a normal case here this is a normal case but now this is the interleaving data okay this is an interleaved interleaved frame keep that in mind that we are converting our burst error into single bit error okay so the error right now is here the same error right it is earlier in the 5 6 7 8 now because of the interleaving we have 2 6 10 14 so now if you see the graph here let me let me just draw in the paint uh, let me take the new graph here okay and you see here you see here the the problem is 2 6 10 14 so here i have a graph so i will write it down first of all you know the 1 then it is going to be 5 then 9 then 13 because it is the transmitter side antenna or the transmitter side you know the the graph so it is going to be the same this 1 5 9 13 so i'm going i have to draw in this way only okay it is not receiver receiver side it doesn't know that how this frame is interleaved right so or receiver side it is having d interleaving which means this frames again get back to the original position so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 like that but now in the transmitter side we have interleaved that's why we have to write in this way okay 1 5 9 13 then 2 then 6, then 10, then 14, 
then 3 like that okay so now here error is in the 2 6 10 14 you understand that this is the error so transmitter side it is the burst error yes that's that's completely okay but now this data has been you know get to the receiver side and as i told you that receiver side we have d interleaving okay receiver side d interleaving is there so it can it converts this 15913 again into the original position which means you know you will get back 1 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 like that you will get back so i have to draw in this way 1 then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, then 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, like that. So now you will easily see that where, is, where exactly is the error? It is error in the 2. So I will point my, so I will point that, that this is the error location 2, then the error location is 6, then it is in the 10, and this is in the uh, then 14 is in the location of 14. So you can see here the boast error is converted into the single bit error. Now receiver knows where exactly the error is and he can easily easily uh, recover it or easily you know correct it. So this is the work of interleaving which you know uh, uh, which is the best possi possible way to detect the error and correct it. There are so many encoders and decoders available by which you can you can exactly do the same thing. But this is one thing that GSM you know uh, possess for error detection and error correction. I hope you understand it. So after the interleaving, after the interleaving, we have boost formatting, but with that, which means that you know the 57-bit block, which is now error detected and error corrected, is going to be boosted in the um, some binary information is added to the to the block, and then you know those additional information is you know passed to the ciphering block. Okay, so here this boost formatting is having additional information. Additional information and passes to the ciphering. Now, ciphering is nothing but it is specifically meant for uh, you know encryption and decryption and more precisely for authentications. So it will arrange a key uh, for the sender side and receiver side. Then you know you are going to be authenticated. And once you are authenticated, your data is going to be encrypted and decrypted with some cipher key. That's for we. That's for the reason we have ciphering here. Modulation. It is nothing but you know this is the last part of the this complete sender side modulation. Specifically, you know it converts your not converts it 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 uh, it not converts but it gives you the you know um, you can say the low signal to the high signal like that. I can explain. You. So the low signal converted into the high signal. Okay, because you know if your signal is very low, then it is it is not going to be, it is not uh, move further. It is not move far from your transmitter antennas. I need some some uh, high speed connections so that your your data or the voice you know get back or not get back, but it receives to the receiver side exactly in the format. So that's why we have modulation techniques by which you can you know uh, convert your signal into some high speed or high data rate so that it receives to the receiver uh, on the exact same time without any delay. And the receiver side, it you know, it it again um, it, it reverse the process, complete uh, reverse the process. That means modulation is going to be demodulation, then ciphering is deciphering, burst formatting, deinterleaving, channel coding, then channel decoding, source coding. It means source decoding and speech. You can hear the uh, you can hear the voice call of the user one. So in this way, call routing, you know, this is the simple block of call routing. In the next session, we're going to understand that how, you know, a call is generated and how the call is terminated with the help of call routing. I hope you understand it. Thank you so much for listening to me. If you have any doubt, you can meet me in the comment section and uh, please like um, the video. And if you haven't subscribed my channel, I insist you to please subscribe. Thank you so much.